So SDN and NFV or Network Function Virtualization are both very interesting approaches which have uh, developed in recent times in the networking industry. And Verizon is interested in these because it helps us solve uh, a few fundamental problems we face. Uh, we need to lower our costs, both CapEx and OpEx. We need to be able to introduce services faster, service agility. And we need to make our network flexible. We need to be able to adapt to shifting user behavior, adapt to shifting traffic patterns. So all of these things are feasible using these approaches of SDN and NFV. Addressing all of these issues now becomes much more practical. So we are exploring this space very heavily. We're doing proof of concepts. We're getting into trials with, uh, in limited ways with customers and really exploring what is possible with this technology and how we can use it. Uh, what is lacking currently is the whole set of tools and operational environments which we have to use to make this operational in network. If we want to introduce this in our network, we really need a lot of help with the management and orchestration layers in, uh, which go above the technologies which we're talking about in terms of SDN and NFV. NTT is a leader in the SDN space. We've first announced our enterprise cloud in June of 2012. We have been part of the Open Network Foundation and been an active member in participating with SDN forums. We have already announced feature functionality within our enterprise cloud that enables customers to port workloads within our data center. We've realized some benefits of automation CapEx and OpEx reductions with some of our customers in the order of magnitude of 20 to 30 percent. Today, the primary goal has been shorter time to market and automation features, but we think that this is moving faster and faster towards the nirvana of hybrid cloud computing functionality. With our SDN underpinnings, we're able to deliver an ability for our enterprise clients to connect their on-premise environment into our enterprise cloud and truly utilize the cloud for all of the promises of agility and scalability. And all of this can be done through an automated process by simply logging into a single portal, connecting their on-prem environment into our enterprise cloud and deploy compute resources within our environment. We have announced our enterprise cloud in 10 different locations, um, eight different countries, and we continue to develop our enterprise cloud to enable fun functions like SDN tunneling that will assist corporations with migrating their cloud assets into our environment and vice versa. SDN has been progressing fairly rapidly. The standards have been starting to fall into place with our ONF uh, standardizing, I mean, the open flow. And uh, it has already seen deployments, I mean, in the data centers, of course. And uh, in the carrier space, uh, it is uh, moving sort of from use case evaluation uh, through POX towards uh, early trials. and. Uh, no, it's progressing. So, I mean, uh, it's a bright future for SDN. Uh, I think the earliest implementations are likely to be uh, in service chaining, uh, traffic steering, I mean, in the service edge. So SDN is, uh, is obviously happening, especially in the data center space, but I think the time is ripe now to bring it out into the service provider space. I think service provider SDN has a great opportunity of both uh, simplifying networks and also speeding up the, the, the new, new innovation and applications on top of service provider networks. We're actually engaging heavily now with, with key customers, especially now with Telstra, uh, where we have a prototyping ongoing. And we, we feel that uh, you know, already by end of this year, we'll be able to go out into commercial applications. There are a number of interesting use cases where a service provider SDN will be applicable. One is uh, policy-based service chaining, a big opportunity for uh, network simplification and also uh, application differentiation. Well, SDN is obviously having a big impact on everyone in the industry. This ONS event is evidence of that. Clearly what we have is a change enabled by software, and software is obviously the key component that will drive the future of networking. It's the ability to orchestrate across different technologies, different locations in the network, reaching from the customer all the way to the data center. And it's the ability to do that in a way where you're not constrained to do what you're told, but you as an end user can get the bandwidth and performance latency and so on that you need for your specific application at your own pace and agenda. So this is an exciting uh, enabler for end users. 
Assign produces products that uh, enable packet optical transport solutions, but we also have an extensive software portfolio that extends connectivity into the data center and out to the end users at all layers. So we believe that the software component that we've built for our packet optical solutions uh, can apply more generally and enable uh, these exciting new opportunities. You can't go anywhere in the world, especially to a network infrastructure conference, and not hear about SDN. You know, from where we sit, we think SDN coupled with NFV play very important roles. However, those are not the problem. The problems that we see our customers trying to solve are around service creation, service activation, and service assurance. Bringing value to those sets of challenges, whether it's driving cost out of that process, or in some way, shape, or form, driving and protecting revenue streams for them throughout that process. That's where their problems are today. And we do believe things like SDN and NFV can truly bring some value to that. But our focus is looking at those challenges and use cases around those challenges and then figuring out how we can bring value to them. When we look at SDN, there are um, a lot of different applications of SDN, a lot of different types of SDN. So if you certainly look at the data center, uh, then it's very clear that data center operators have embraced SDN, and that is a prime time uh, deployment and very mainstream technology today. Um, we tend to work much more with carriers, and when we talk with the carriers, the feedback we get is that the, uh, the value proposition isn't clear, the use case is not clear, but they probably have challenges which are, if anything, greater than those faced by the data center operators. Um, as opposed to in the data center where the challenge is all about just scaling and how do you turn up VMs, how do you turn up the infrastructure as fast as possible. Um, in the carrier uh, market, you have challenges of geography, you have the, the challenge of bandwidth demand outstripping revenue, and you have the challenge of legacy uh, network devices which have to be interworked with. And so, you know, from, from our perspective, we see the future of SDN in carrier networks uh, very much around two main challenges. One is integrating MPLS and legacy IP routing technologies into an SDN environment, seamlessly, seamlessly interoperating. Um, and the other is, working through all the layers where you actually have visibility at the IP layer, OTN, optical layers up in the controller so that you can absolutely optimize the network across all of those layers. Well, SDN is a disruptive technology that's going to change the way that we design, build, and operate, and secure our networks. Netronome was founded on the premise of open networks, flow processing, and the use of accelerated COT servers for network functions, all of which are fundamental to the ideas of SDN, OpenFlow and the work that's going on in the NFV areas. Uh, early rollouts of SDN have largely been around provisioning the cloud data centers, but we're seeing a lot of interest specifically from carriers for things like network-to-network -network gateways and more generally the ability to uh, control their global infrastructure. Um, like any technology, SDN is mature in certain areas, but we see that there's areas in which uh, still have yet to be addressed. So specifically, uh, layer four through seven services. So how do things like cybersecurity applications, intrusion detection, intrusion prevention, firewalls and the like, how do they participate in the SDN infrastructure is a question that uh, still has to be addressed. From a device architecture perspective, early SDN rollouts have largely been built and, and based on legacy network processors and Ethernet switches, which are perfectly fine for the, the layer two, layer three provisioning aspects of SDN. But at Netronome, we see an opportunity for a flow processor specifically built for SDN to enable what we like to call the intelligent edge of the software-defined networking infrastructure. So that's a device that supports millions of flows at hundreds of gigabits per second and is completely programmable in nature to evolve with the ever-dynamically changing uh, standards and opportunities that SDN presents.